Ha! <laughs> What's up? Wagwan. What's going on, y'all? It's been a minute. It's been a long time. Excuse my dog, Charlie. <laughs> She's probably going to be in and out of the frame because she loves to be by me. She's obsessed with me. So, anywho, I'm back with another, 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 another video, y'all. It's been a long time. I don't know if it's been a year, maybe a year, almost a year since. Um, my last video where I shared with you all about um, losing my husband in um, 2019 of October It's been an interesting journey to say the least It's been hard It's been glorious It's been rough tough It's been a learning experience It's been a time of Drawing closer and nearer to God so in the end, everything works together for your good. For, for those that love God, everything works together for your good. And that is my story. So, going off of that, and if y'all hear barking, forgive me. That's my dog. She thinks she's big and bad. She ain't about, about this big. That's it. But she thinks she's big and bad. But that's okay. So, if you hear barking, forgive me. Um, yes, yeah, so today I am here to talk about what I have learned since becoming a widow. What I have learned since becoming a young widow. There has been so many lessons. There's been so many things that God has been taking me through. It's taking me through. It's been a, 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 a season of pruning, you know, reconfiguration. You feel me? All of the above. It's, it's, it's just been a, a season where he's really been tearing down to build back up. He's been breaking down to build me back into the woman that he has called me to be. And even with me saying that, like, <laughs> my heart is doing giddy giddy. You feel me? My heart is doing me small. I'm sorry. That's my, my African side coming out. Shout out to all the Ghanaians, West Africa. I'm sorry. I'm I'm in good spirits. Let me stop apologizing. I'm not so sorry. The God, the Lord, the Lord is good. God is good. God, G O D, Jehovah Jireh, is good. Period. Okay. Let me let me get serious. Let me get comfortable. Because yeah, let me get comfortable. I have my notes here because. <laughs> How do you function without notes? Yeah, you can't. So, let me sit down. Hold on, before we get into this, what do y'all think about this hair and me? <laughs> ah! The slay it. Look, okay, I'm not slay. I'm not a slay queen. Plus, I'm a woman of God in the name of Jesus. But uh, the hair. The makeup, the glory. Praise Jesus. But anyway, let me get comfortable. Okay, what I have learned since becoming a widow. Number one, uno, setting boundaries. Let me, um, <laughs> let me sip some tea. Setting boundaries, yes. Mm -hmm. So for me, in the past, I was um, someone who did not know anything about boundaries. I didn't set boundaries for myself. You know, I, I, I didn't know how to speak up for myself. Unless maybe you, I got really upset or I felt like, okay, th this situation really warrants a response. Then I would say something. But typically, I didn't set boundaries for myself at all. But after the passing of my husband, you know, I know I, I have some fellow widows that do watch um, this video. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I 
feel cringy when I use the word widow because it's a so I feel like that word that name that title is associated with weakness and whatnot but that's that's what I am in the moment you know what I'm saying so yeah anyway I just felt like adding that it was irrelevant but I, I felt like adding it but anywho yeah I, when you become a widow you know all of a sudden everybody is coming around because honestly you're coming you're in this tragic situation you know where you have lost the closest person to you, you your spouse somebody that you share life food clothes you share your body with your intimate with you share emotions you share your secrets with like somebody you see every single day and then all of a sudden they're not there that alone is traumatic that alone is traumatic because it's a ch an instant change just like that like in one second this person that you're with for that you've been with like forever all of a sudden it's not there and it's just traumatic so of course family and friends are going to come around and they're going to sh want to comfort you you know and a lot of them i'm sure all of the okay let me not say all of them most of them are coming from i'm sorry that's charlie are coming from a loving place you know because they want to bring you comfort they want you to feel okay and 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 they they, they just want to love on you but sometimes people don't know how to do that and people don't know where people don't always know where to meet you you feel me where to meet you in your needs and they're going to interpret stuff through their own lens you know everybody has a lens in life they're going to interpret things through their own lens and they're going to filter it through their own lens lens and they're going to push it out to you how they feel like is good and sometimes it's not always good sometimes it's not always great uh, for you you get me like for me I, I, I am a Ghanaian I'm a Ghanaian woman my parents are both from Ghana but I was um, born here in the States in the United States so you know I'm very tied to my culture <laughs> you get me I, I'm very my friend will always say I'm very Ghanaian which I am and um you know culture is a big a big part of us it's, it is a big part of us and sometimes to the detriment of the community but that's a whole nother story that's for another day y'all but anyway um i remember during the time of the funeral you know people some people would legit tell me oh you know just cry because I and I fit. That's that's in chi in chi a language in Ghana called chi. That's saying, oh, it's gonna make it nice. Like it will make it, I guess, appealing. You know, because I guess somehow, if people come around and you as the wife are not mourning, you're not expressing. We are very expressive people. If you're not showing that expression of grief, then, um you going to look some way or it's going to look like you didn't care about your husband or you didn't love your husband but everybody does not mourn the same way i know for me i was in shock for a long time a long time for of some time even while i was in the hospital with my husband when i saw my husband take his last breath i couldn't cry because i was in such a state of shock like i couldn't even function in that moment and um, it was like that for the funeral. I couldn't really cry. I couldn't really express my emotions and grief at that same t uh, uh, um, in that moment. And at the same time, I'm not. I'm typically not the person that likes to show ex emotions or be vulnerable in front of people that I don't really know or I am not close to. And that was the case with that. There were a lot of people that were you know, um, friends, family, and associates, but I wasn't necessarily close to that. I still very much appreciate, you know, but I wasn't necessarily close to them. So for me to just come out and, you know, just cry or do whatever, it just, it didn't come normal to me, you know, and, and like I said, I was in a state of shock. So just saying that to say that people are going to come to you with, 
all kinds of advice, you know, and all kinds of little statements here and there that might come across as offensive. And sometimes you have to, hold on, you, hold on, man, hold on, sir. No, I don't think that this is going to work for me. I don't necessarily agree with that, but oh, I get you, but you know, boundaries. And in that in that moment, your emotion, like your mental, your emotion, emotional, and sorry guys, your emotional and mental state are at stake. You can break down in any moment. For me, I knew that. Like, Theo, <laughs> you have to set up these boundaries, you know. And family members are going to expect things out of you that you cannot give to them. I, I told myself in that moment, okay. This is a moment, Theo, where you have to be selfish for you and your son. Selfish, for lack of better terms. You have to be selfish for you and your son and prioritize you guys first over everything and anything. And if that means that I have to offend somebody in the process, so be it. So be it. If, if I have to offend you in order to protect my mental health, my emotional health then it is what it is and I had to come to a place I had to grow and learn and come to a place where I was okay with that you know I, I, I've been used I was so used to being a people pleaser you know because I didn't want to look a certain way in front of people I didn't want to come off as mean or unkind or uh, stand, stand offish or nonchalant. I didn't want to come off like that in, in, in the sight of men, but I feel like God, not I feel like I know that God used this situation to be uh, to teach me that you cannot please God and please man. <laughs> That's a word. You can't please God and please man. Because you know what? Sometimes God is going to ask you to do some things that the circle around you, your friends and family and associates, whomever, will not agree with. And they're going to look at you like, what are you doing with your life? Or they're going to look at you like, um, what's going on? And you have to do it because you want to be obedient to God. But if you are so worried about your self-image, if you are so worried about what somebody is going to think or say about you, that's never get, going to get done. You, you, you're not going to please God. <laughs> like, you, you, you're just not going to be obedient to what God is telling you to do. And I know that in that moment when my, my, my husband passed away, it was just a moment where God was just pruning. He's just, and it still is till now, but he's just pruning me. You know what I'm saying? He gave me, he even at some point, in the very beginning stages of, of going through grief, he gave me a vision where I was laying in the middle of a room, just laying on the ground, and I was like cowering in fear, and the house that I was in was just being torn down. It was just being torn down, and I'm just laying there cowering in fear because there's so much going on around me, but then uh, in the end, he was building up a new house around me. Listen, and that's what God has been doing in my life. He's been tearing things. Nothing looks the same in my life. Nothing. Even if you know if you knew me in the past and you see me now, nothing looks the same. Nothing looks the same. <laughs> you know. Um, so yes, setting boundaries, healthy boundaries. Oh, let me let me add that on. Healthy boundaries. Not boundaries that stem from a place of of um bitterness. Or unforgiveness because we, we do that we set boundaries that stem from a place of oh I don't want you I don't want to talk to you I don't want you in my life because you did this and that and that and that to me and it hurt me and I feel like you didn't appreciate me you undervalue me so I'm gonna cut you off no yes sometimes you are going to have to cut people off just for the fact that you want to protect your peace listen Peace cannot be bought because if peace could be bought, celebrities and whatnot would not be killing themselves. They, they will not be kill, committing suicide. They got money. Okay. They could, they could buy anything, but yet 
they end up committing suicide because there's a lack of peace there. Hopelessness is there. And peace is not something that you want to just throw around to anything or anyone. You cannot just throw it around and just dibble and dabble with. Peace is very essential. It is essential. It is essential. And it even reminds me of the Bible verse that states that we should not cast our pearls to swine. Okay? Don't just be messing, letting people mess with your peace all in the name of wanting to be okay in the eyes of someone. Wanting to please someone. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. So, yes. Moving on. Sorry I'm, if I'm looking down. I'm looking at my notes. The second thing that I learned, I knew about this already. But I think after my husband passed, God began to teach me on a deeper level. The secret place. The secret place. The importance of really staying in the secret place. Really a Abiding in God. Abiding in God. Um, after my husband passed, as I said, as I, I, I stated earlier, it was it was it was very tra tragic. It was traumatic. Um, not only for me, it was traumatic for um, my son as well. And I knew that I had to stick to closer to God. I knew that I could not draw away from God or else something up here would tick. I, I remember I was telling my my friend, Nanaya, her, her um, YouTube channel is called Anyama. Check her out. But I remember she's my very good sis. She's my very good friend turned sister. I, I, she's basically my sister. Um, I remember telling her she they had come over with some other sisters of mine. She had come over with some other sisters of mine. And I remember telling her, you know, you know, if I'm not careful, like if I if, if I don't stay with God, I'm going to end up in the asylum. I'm going to end up in the mental ward. And I was being very serious. I wasn't speaking it over myself, but I knew that if I didn't stick close to God if I didn't remain in the secret place if I didn't stay in the secret place consistently this would just go off it would go off so the secret place and I want to read oh sorry y'all I got butterfingers I want to read um two am I still recording Yes, I want to read two scriptures um, to you concerning the secret place that really speaks to my heart and speaks to my soul. The first one is Psalm 27 verse 5 and it reads, For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me up upon a rock. And that's how it was for me. That's 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 what the secret place became for me. Um, you know, I think in the beginning when I when I used to hear of the secret place or read about the secret place, um, I would think that oh, that's just a time that you go and you spend with God and you read and you pray and that's that. That's the end. But as with, with with this um, um occurrence of becoming a widow and just going deeper into god having to be go having to go deeper in god i realized that the secret place is not just about the setting the physical setting You're, the secret place is in here the secret place is in your heart it's it's you just sometimes just maybe even being at work you know i was i was a nurse maybe just being at work and passing out medication and you're just meditating on the goodness of god or you're making the bible says make melodies making melodies in your heart or or, or, or you know just thinking about god and meditating on his scripture and um the secret place became do or die 
it was a do or die situation for me like sis if, if you don't go to God you might end up in the grave too sis and I'm not even saying that to be comical but it, it was it was that serious it was that serious the importance of the secret place because listen um man can say something to you and then god can say that very same repeat that very same thing that a man or whomever said to you and whatever god said will carry more weight will carry more power. It's, it's, it's the force behind it. You know, I remember, just to share another testimony, I remember I had, after my husband passed, I had went to my mom's place and, oh, well, I get emotional talking about this, but I, my mom could just tell that I wasn't okay. So I left my mom's place and I was driving home and it was raining that day and I had my um, son in the back seat. And I remember I was a bawling. I was crying. Already it was raining hard. And then you're crying too. So, you know, could barely see the road. It's nighttime. There's um, people's headlights are on and it's beaming in your eye and you got water flowing. I was just so heartbroken. I was so just broken and I was just crying. I was, I was crying out for my husband. I was just like, I, I, I could not understand what was going on and there was just so much heart and pain there and I remember what God whispered to me God was like why are you crying he's just sleeping now see if somebody else had come to say that to me I'm out of what you say what <laughs> I might have went into fighting mode like what are you talking about like you get you not making sense homie watch what you say to me in this moment your girl is emotional but God was like why are you crying he's sleeping but it wasn't just the words it was the comfort Ooh, I could preach a sermon it was the comfort that came with it after that and in that moment, the tears just like right, like I feel like God is even wiping my tears now. In that moment, my the tears in my eyes clear, guy, like it clear. The tears in my eyes stopped. It clear. It was almost like God Himself came now and took a tissue. It was like, it's okay, my daughter. It's okay. And I could feel Him just bringing warmth to my heart and. There were many times in the secret place where God did that for me. Where it wasn't just, it wasn't just um, a thing of just reading the word and then finding comfort. It was, it was, it was a tangible presence. It was a tangible warmth. It was, there was a tangible healing being in the secret place. And I could just feel him just wrapping his arms around me in that moment and God, guys, when I was sitting in the car driving, I was shook at what was happening. So I was trying, I was legit trying to force myself to cry. I was trying to force uh, tears to come out of my eyes and I could not find one tear. Not one. And do you know what I did for the rest of that ride? I turned on some worship music and I worshiped my way on home. Listen, you can still find worship even in your demise, even in your trouble, you can still find worship in the secret place. God can cause you to lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. Even in this moment, even for what I've been going through, I thank you. I remember there was a, there was a time where I was in the shower and I was crying again. This was after I became, uh, became a widow and I was crying again. And the Lord said, I remember the Lord saying, just thank me. And I wanted, I legit wanted to punch the air because I was like, what are you talking about? Thank you for what? I'm a widow. I'm 28 years old. I have a, 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 a I think my child was five at that time. Dad just turned six. My husband passed away like a week, almost a week before my son's uh, sixth birthday. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is not making sense. You want me to say thank you? No, Lord. You know, like you, you wanted to fight God because you like, we sometimes we think we know better than God, right? And I could just feel 
God just being gentle, just being like, just thank me. So I just, I humbled. And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to humble yourself. You have to quiet your flesh. Quiet what you feel like you want to do in that moment and say, Lord, I thank you. And that's what I began to do in that moment. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for it letting me experience my husband for six years i thank you for the 30 i think he was 34 or 5 when he passed away it it, it 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 skips me but i thank you for the 35 years that he lived here on earth i thank you lord god that he's in heaven with you rejoicing right now i thank you for this i thank you for that i thank you for this and let me tell you guys as i was thanking god the again that was a warmth a warmth, almost like a, a coddling that came over me. Like God was just like, it's okay, daughter, I got you. And once again, the tears seeds ceased and I ended up worship. I came out the bathroom, my sisters were at my house and they were looking at me like, what's going on? Cause I was coming, I came out the bathroom just worshiping, singing to God because I could not, I could not comprehend the tangibility of his presence like like when you feel like nothing in this world can comfort you not money not food not your career not your title when nothing can comfort you god can you being in the secret place and acknowledging him and thanking him it will bring you such comfort comfort Listen, so yeah, another scripture that comes to my mind when um, I, I, I dwell on the secret place is Psalm 91. Know that after the pandemic, <laughs> yo, 2020 pandemic, Psalm 91 became Christian's lifeline. You get me? It became our lifeline. And, and, and that's what it was for, for me. I was a lifeline. And let me even pull it up and read the part that gets to my heart gets to my heart psalm 91 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the, you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place and so forth and so on. I wanted to stop, but I just felt the, 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 the Holy Spirit asking me to go on. So I just read all of that. But I, and, and one thing that the Holy Spirit is even bringing to my mind right now is the word, the power of the word, the power of the word, the power of the word, the Holy Bible. Listen, the Bible, it held me. It, okay, this, this video is turning low-key turning into a t testimony, but let me testify to the goodness of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The Word of God. Listen, I would wake up and on my heart would, I would just wake up. I'm like, Lord, no, I'm awake again. My heart is shattered. I don't want to wake up and I would have to go to the Word in, in, order, in order to be able to just function for the day. To function for the day. The word of God carries so much power and it carries so much of his presence, y'all. Like when you're going through something, please, in the secret place, do not neglect the word. And I say this even to myself now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, do not neglect the word of God. 
sorry guys my camera stopped because it stops recording at 30 minutes but anywho anyway yes as I was saying secret place I learned that the secret place is super duper 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 and essential important to the Christian life do not neglect it do not neglect the Word of God do not neglect your worship to God thank him even in the times where it is perilous and turbulence is high thank him in that moment amen last but not least as my people say last but not least faith Ooh, what? And I, I think that ties, that kind of ties into um, the secret place. Faith. Holding on to your faith. I learned that faith is so important. Having hope in the Lord Jesus Christ is so important. So important. So important. Like... You have to have faith. It is, is it. You have to ride on the wings of faith because that is what is going to carry you. You know, when hopelessness presents itself to you, when it's growling and snaring at you, you have to hold on to faith. Your faith, it is a shield. It is a shield. It protects you. It protects your heart. Because when the world and, and, and the turbulence of this world and the cares of this world is threatening you, it is your faith that will act as a shield and repel all of that because you're placing your hope in God. You're placing your hope in God. You're believing in Him. Even for what you do not see, you're believing in Him for that. And I had to I had to learn that it was total deal from here on out it is total dependency have I uh you know how do I say the word have I neglected that in some aspects yes I have not been perfect there were times where I was I was like Oh my guy, I forget. Man cannot come and kill it. And I'll go and do whatever I wanted to do. Be like, guy, guy could. Man cannot come and kill himself. I'm tired of this Jesus thing. I'm tired. I'm tired of holding on to my faith. I'm tired of go to bed. I'm go to go wherever I want to go. And of course, you know that that never ended up well for me. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Because the Lord will be like, the Lord will just be looking at you like this. Hey, will you come, 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 come. You just grab you. Come, 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 come and sit down. <laughs> and that's what God did with me. He would just be looking at me like, look at her. See, see, see. We'll be throwing our temper tantrums like, <laughs> like, Lord, I can't do this. I'm walking away. And God would be like, will you bring your, bring, bring your tell you? Let me stop cutting up. Let me stop cutting up. <laughs> you know, it would be like that where at times I'm like I'm tired God I'm tired like I don't want to do this anymore and he would pull me back he would pull me back into his bosom and I love the Lord for that I love him so much for that but yeah the, I, I had to depend on him total total dependency on him for everything and anything um I'm looking down at my notes once again. Um, when no one is there, God is. When no one is there, God is. The, the, when you're going through grief, there is very few things that um, will settle your heart. And I'm sure other widows that watch this video um can relate there was just nothing that could come from me in that moment but god nothing nothing you know people can be there and and i love and appreciate the people that are in my life that were there um some are no longer in my life some are still here in my life but they were there um and you know they brought so much comfort and love into my life but they could not touch the place that God touched. You know what I'm saying? They could not bring the kind of comfort that 
it was it was just a deep it was a deeper more, a deeper comfort that God brought um so God man cannot give you what God can give you he can't he can't and um it's only God that I I, I I realized that it's only God that can meet my needs. Only God that can meet my needs. Only God that can meet my needs. And and um, I think being married um, to the wonderful man, Samuel Abwaji, that I was married to, he did everything. Everything. Okay, like, I'm not going to say, I wasn't spoiled, but... He was just someone who was always on top of things. You get me? He was always on top of things. Paying bills, making sure things are in place, planning stuff. That was him. I was, I'm more of a free kind of person. Oh, what's going on today? Okay, let's do this, that, that, that. Today. We'll think about tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> you know, which is, there's pros and cons to that. But he was someone who was, he was just a wonderful man and, um, because he was the way he was, I realized that I depended on him so much. I depended on him so much. And when he passed away, almost, I, it felt like the world was cr kind of crashed. Like time stopped in that moment. There was no such thing as time. I was in, uh, uh, it was almost like you're in a virtual reality. You get me? And, um, after he passed, I realized that uh, God is a husband. God is a, no, n not only there's so many folds to God. There's so many aspects to God. There's so many dimensions to God. He can be a father. He can be a wife. He can be a mother. He can be a sister, a brother. He can he can be a husband, and that's what he he became to me, and and he's still doing now. He became. A husband to me and listen I, I have not needed one thing I have not struggled for one thing since my husband passed it's almost like God knew what was coming and just put things in place and you know maybe somebody will watch this and be like you know why would if God knew that was coming why would he allow that to happen you know, and it's a question I ask too, but I realized that as a man, my vision is limited. But God, God sees everything. He knows your beginning to the end. He knows your end from the beginning. He knows every single thing. He knows the, the, the hair follicles, the amount of hair follicles in my hair. Okay, he knows me from head to toe. He knows my depths. He knows. He, I mean, the, the word says that he be, before he placed you in in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knows every single detail about me. So I ch so then I choose to have faith in him. I choose to trust in him because he's the one that knows everything. I don't see everything, you know. I might see from. A chicken a chicken's perspective God sees from a eagle's perspective just a, an analogy you know I might be seeing it from the ground from here where I'm, 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 I'm sitting this is how I see things but he's looking at it from an eagle's perspective which allows you to see way further than what a chicken could see and so I just I I, I realized that faith Faith is big when it comes to this walk. Faith is big when it comes to this Christian walk. Faith is big when it comes to this widowhood uh, uh, journey. It's big. It's big. It's so important and crucial to hold on to your faith. To, to, to not be hopeless. I remember um, there was a time where there's just one day where it was, it was everything was, it was so heavy on me. And I kind of spent the day in bed. And I just realized that Theo, you can't do this. <laughs> like, if you want to survive in this moment, you can't just get up and lay in bed. You have to get up and get out and do things. You have to get out and, and move on faith. Sorry, my hair is in my mouth. 
you have to get up and ride on the wings of faith walk in faith and and that means that you know even though I don't see it you know even though I, I don't really necessarily see the goodness in this situation I don't necessarily see the victory yet all I see is darkness in the tunnel I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel I believe that I'm getting there I'm going to get there I believe that my my God is pushing me there he's taking me there he's leading me there even though I don't see the Sun right now all I see is darkness around me I believe that God there that in God there's going to be a breaking of dawn there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel I'm not going to remain in the darkness I'm not going to always be depressed I'm not going to deal with anxiety all the time I'm not going to have panic attacks all the time I'm not always going to be uh, burdened by the stress and the cares of life I'm not always going to be uh, 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 grieving this way uh, there's going to be a time where I can smile again there's going to be a time where I can laugh again because my God is alive because God is there <laughs> because God is tangible because his power is there because his word is there okay so those are some of the things I know it's been a, a a long video, but those are some of the things that I learned. I think some some of the most important things that I learned um, in this journey of widowhood, becoming a young widow, and just going through this journey with 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 God and 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 becoming really really becoming him molding me and becoming the woman that he wants me to be, not the woman that I I want myself to be, but but. The woman that he wants me to be so i thank you god i can't even talk <laughs> i thank you guys so much for tuning into this video and the the love that y'all poured out on the last video from strangers fellow widows you know i i don't have many words but i just say that god bless you guys May God meet you guys where you guys need it the most. May he wrap you and your family members, my fellow widows. May he wrap you and your family members, your children, in his warmth and his love and his care and kindness. God is there for you. He will never leave nor he will, will he forsake you. I know things look turbulent right now. And it looks like he has abandoned you. And it looks like God's love has run out. <laughs> it's, it's run its course in your life and you're asking God why how wh why are we here Lord how did we get here but tell trust me there's a bigger picture to it to it all there's a bigger picture and you are going to be amazed when, when, when you stick to God and you abide in him and you let him abide in you you're going to be amazed at the kind of partnership the kind of fellowship that that will arise out of this you will be amazed at the kind of woman man whom whatever that you will become you will be amazed at God's handiwork in your life you know and I pray that his presence will be also tangible around you today and all the rest of the days of your life even in the lives of your children and the lives of your family members his love and presence will be that more uh, 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 the, the present in your life, even more so that more than what he showed me in this process, in this journey. So thank you all for tuning in. Please comment below, subscribe. Let's talk, let's just now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> let's speak about the goodness of God, let's discuss. And um, if you have a prayer topic, please, leave it down there i'm here to pray for you i'm here to pray with you okay I'm, we're here to encourage each other um um you know the bible tells us that we should love each other we should revere ourselves higher we should revere other people higher than ourselves so i'm here for you i'm here for you i'm here for you 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 I'm here for you. I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to throw some scripture at you. I'm here to throw some 
girl, you better get up. Boy, you better stop playing. Okay? And I expect that from you as well. God bless you all. Have a blessed week. I will be back with another video. Y'all pray for me. This consistency thing. Pray for me. I peace. Holla. I will see you guys again in another video. Love ya.